Hello, all you truth seekers. Oh, there are hundreds of new people receiving this for the first time. So let me just say welcome. I know a lot of you are now getting this truth seekers email. There's thousands of you that will receive this email weekly if you hang on and you don't unsubscribe. Give me a chance, give me a couple of weeks. But what I do is I send out a weekly video and we have a weekly focus and it's all about walking together. And I want to walk with you, share triumphs and tribulations and things that I'm working on for the week so that maybe we can all work on it. And I just, just got done with my live booth. That's such a cool offering at the virtual Catholic conference this past weekend. Praise God that I was even a part of it. There was an opportunity to sign up for live booths. Some speakers decided yes or no, it was optional. And then you get on a little webinar and you kind of chat and you talk and you get to know each other better. And my uh, title was called Let's Walk Together because that's what it's all about. We are not meant to walk the journey alone and it's sometimes tough to find people on the journey. Five years of my walk, I was by myself. I really didn't have a lot of people that were on the path. My husband wasn't, my children, my extended family, my mom ended up getting on back into the church, but I never really had a lot of deep conversations with her about you know the faith. It was me, a lot of videos, and I connected with some people who are doing what I'm trying to do today and uh, learn as we go along and learn from each other. This is not, you know, I don't know everything for sure, but I know that I can share a lot of things that I've struggled with, maybe help you in things that you're struggling with too. Um, and that's what it's all about. So first, Palm Sunday, that's the day that I'm recording this. So we are entering Holy Week. Let's think about that. Palm Sunday is when Jesus rode in on the the donkey right and they're all hailing him as the christ right hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord and they're laying down palms and blankets and creating a path for the king to come into jerusalem and then five days later they're yelling crucify him crucify him so this is a very important week in the Christian faith and in the Catholic faith. So I want to tell all truth seekers, we have all walks of life watching this. Some are Catholic, some are Christian, some are not Christian, some are Jewish, some are, you know, practicing some Buddhist stuff and, and other types of spiritual things. So just be aware that not everyone is a Catholic Christian on this, on this program. So Holy Week, this is why I explained some things, is a very intense week. This is the time that we know that Jesus loves us so much and he is going to suffer 5,480 wounds. Look up St. Bridget. I'd say start that prayer, the one-year prayer or the 12-year prayer. I finished the one-year prayer and I'm 13 months into the 12-year prayer. Got a long way to go, but the promises are beautiful. And there's 5,480 bloody wounds, but we know that Jesus died for us, that precious blood that poured out of his body and the horrific crucifixion of him hanging on that cross for three hours was for our salvation. And we were the sinners. We were the ones that caused those wounds. So I want us to focus deep on examining our conscience. I've attached in this email or in the description of the YouTube video, if you're not part of the Truth Seekers email, there's a link for you to sign up for that too if you wanna join, a beautiful examination of conscience that really should make all of us think. Let's read it, let's think about our lives and how we are behaving, how we are acting, and how we may be adding more wounds to Jesus as a result of our doing. And if you possibly can this week, I know a lot of us are in lockdown. We're more bummed in bummed. I, I wanted to use the word dying, but I think that's a horrible word to use. We are so thirsty for the mass, so thirsty for the mass. 
and were not able to receive Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. I'm a daily mass goer. Oh my gosh, I'm starving for him. But I'm offering it up. I'm offering up every suffering and sacrifice. And I just want to ask everyone this week, if you can, please go to confession. I don't know if all places have this offering. I'm pretty sure worldwide that's not the case. But in America, I believe that there are plenty of places that have confession, even drive up confession, that you can go and get reconciled with God before Easter. This is a time for us to really examine ourselves. Where is it that we need to change? What is it that we need to repent? Repent, 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 and mean it. So I think going through the examination of conscience, the one that I attached, will help everyone think a little bit deeper about their lives. And right now, God is calling you through this crisis. People are out there fearful of their lives, especially those who have no faith. Hey, I, I'm okay to die right now. Bring it. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally ready. I am going to confession every week. I just, um, this Monday, tomorrow, tomorrow, when you guys actually get this, it'll be most Mondays. I know there's a lot of global people that subscribe to this, so it might be Tuesday where you're at. Um, I'm going tomorrow. Go find a place. Get out of your parish if it's not being offered and look at all the other diocesan and neighboring diocesan websites because I'm pretty sure that somehow, some way, you could probably get confession in the U.S., I know it's really not probably going to happen in other parts of the world. But if not, if you can't physically go, then please offer up a sincere act of contrition. Google it. Whatever search engine you use, just get on out there and from the heart, ask God for forgiveness. But even better, if you can go to confession. Ugh. Oh. It's just what amazing sacramental graces we have in the church. And too many, too many Catholics do not take advantage of confession. I'm telling you, there's nothing that's going to make you feel more free and loved and calm and peaceful and joyful than walking out of that confessional, especially if it's been a while. And most definitely, if you have mortal sins on your soul. Oh, trust me on that. Okay, so let's look at how we're living. Let's read the examination of conscience. I don't care who you are, what your religion, you should be reading it anyway. And then get to confession. And let's go deep in prayer. Let's go deep in fasting. It's the last week of Lent. I have struggled with keeping my mouth shut. I have been eating things. I mean, like, you know, if you, if you listen to my podcast and you subscribe, you know, I've eaten like sleeves of Oreos and I've gone off of my Lenten sacrifice too often. I've drank too much. I mean, I'm, I've been feeling this lack of control ever since we've been sequestered in our houses. And I have gone through deliverance prayers and got myself back on track. But I'm telling you this last week, we can finish powerfully and for the most important week holy week we can make even more sacrifices and show god how much we love him he still loves us no matter how many times we fall there's no change in that but i want to love him more and i want to show him that by my sacrifices that is what i'm offering to him my love and my self-control, my bodily mortification, like this body is no longer going to master me. And I'm also praying for discipline. Discipline to get into that deep meditative prayer. I know there's a lot of people that watch my Master Your Mind retreat and here's the survey results. I don't have time, I'm too busy, I want to, but I can't keep my mind off of other things. I'm too distracted. I don't, I don't know how. And if you don't know how, I'm telling you, take my 40-day video prayer course. I'll put a link in there for that. That's the, for those who don't have a regular schedule and don't really know how to pray, then that is for you. 
that will get you on the regular schedule. It's daily, and you'll get an email from me three minutes every day, one focus every day. It's so doable. 15 minutes, it's all you need. Okay, but on the other side of the house, we all need to have some discipline in our lives. Prayer is not something that we should be <sighs> having to do, check, checking it off the list. I mean, prayer is an opportunity for us to sit and love God, to give him our hearts, to tell him thank you, to praise him, worship him. We should be wanting to pray. It should not be a, where does this fit in my to-do list? I would like to suggest everyone get up first thing in the morning. This is going to be a little repetitive for those people who uh, were on my live event moments ago, but it's still fresh in my head, so I have to say it to those who weren't. In the Book of Wisdom, when the manna came down from heaven, it landed on the ground and people got out and they picked it up first thing in the morning so that they could eat. When the sun came up, the manna disappeared. Hmm. There's graces to pray first thing in the morning. Whether you want to get up or not, awesome to do. Yes, it's a sacrifice. You can offer that one up too. But there's something beautiful and filled with God's graces to start your day with Him. I'm telling you, just get up a half an hour earlier and think about how beautiful it is for you to start your day with God before the kids get up, before the husband is around, before, you know, all of your madness, maybe you're working from home and you've got all these other things going on, it puts you in the right frame, God's frame. And then you continue to think about God, you're in God's peace, you're in God's love and his light. And don't forget to subscribe to my 10 minute podcast every Monday through Friday. You could have a 10 minute put Jesus on kind of thing that you can listen to while you're getting ready and starting your day or those of you who are like in Belgium and Australia, New Zealand, I know you guys listen to it at different times, but there are ways that you can be reminded every day that you can be peaceful, loving, kind, because that is what we're called to be as Christians. All right, everyone, breathe the examination of conscience, go to confession and Deepen your prayer and fasting this week. Let's finish strong together. Put in notes in the comments on the YouTube video and share how the week is going. Let's, let's keep each other kind of pumped up, okay? All right, everyone. I love you all so much. Have a blessed and inspired week. Take care.